This deck is absolutely insane. Whenever your opponent makes one mistake, you automatically punish them and capture the W. Hey what's up guys, it's Jake aka Tag, and today we're back in action with Lava Clone, the most skillless deck in the entire game of Clash Royale. If you guys are looking for quick and easy Ws, dominating your opponent at any misplay, this is the deck for you. If your opponent overextends with the Snowball or Zap on offense, quite often they will not be able to defend your Lava Hound clone push on their side of the map. So let's go jump straight into some games and let's assert some dominance. Let's go in for a giant snowball here and unfortunately we see Executioner, so man we have to focus up and play our best because... You guys know how much damage Executioner does against air units. If you're playing Exe, you just hate Lava Clone. It's going to go peck at the river, so this is going to be a little bit interesting for us. I want to go for a Skarmy, but after, the P.E.K.K.A. is going to be the only thing that's going to be able to target it. That means that the Executioner, it is a no attack zone for the Exe. It's not allowed to trespass on our territory and attack what it wants to. It's only allowed to do one or the other, man. If it's going to be on offense, he can direct whatever he wants to attack. But when we're defending, you cannot do anything, man. So he got shut down. The P.E.K.K.A. was targeting the Skarmy. And then the Executioner was forced to for target our Lava Hound. And as a result, we were able to defend that adequately. But Lava Hound is going to be just primarily a tank in this matchup. Or I'm going to be trying to go in the left-hand side and apply aggression with it when he doesn't have his Executioner in cycle. So Executioner is going to be... Couple cards out of cycle, so we can apply some aggression with a flying machine and go in for a Lava Hound. But unfortunately, he's got minions and zaps, so this is going to be a more difficult matchup than I anticipated. I thought it was just going to be like a minor control deck, but he's got Executioner fast cycle with minions, so this is going to be a little bit more sad for me. I think our best bet on the right hand side is maybe going for like a Lumberjack plus Bats push and then going for a flying machine and Lava Hound on the left hand side. And when we do that, we can go and clone the Lumberjack and the Bats. And what will happen is he's going to have to go in for a tornado, but then he won't be able to tornado the fly machine to align with the executioner. So we might be able to win that way. That's going to be one of our best pushes. Let's see if we can make that come to fruition. So we want to go and save our lumberjack if possible. And we want to go in for something like this. He's got fireball, unfortunately, as well. But we're going to go for the clone with the bats and the lumberjack. So this might be able to do a lot of damage. Unfortunately, he's got zap and fireball. Man, this is just a matchup from like... Crazy town. I don't even know how I got this. Fireball, Zap, Minions, Executioner with Tornado. <laughs> this is not good, dude. So he might go in for a lot of spam, and I need to save my Skarmy. Zap is out of cycle, so we know that Skarmy is able to kill, though. So let's try to kill everything with the Skarmy. So Executioner, this is the card cycle we wanted. This is 100% the card cycle we wanted. We should be able to clone the right-hand side. The Executioner is going to bait out the Tornado. And then he's going to Zap. But that's going to be too much, man. Let's go. We actually juked the Zap by using the clone. So everything spaced out. And then he missed the Zap. That was amazing. The best possible timing for me. I could have not been any more lucky in that situation. But you guys just saw our game plan come to fruition. And we won the game simply because... I went in for a lot of spam units on the right hand side that are not bait cards traditionally. And then I cloned, he wasn't expecting it, and we took the tower. So this guy's gonna have guards. We're gonna go and start our Lava Hound since that's what you always wanna do if you have Skarmian Cycle. And we'll see what he's got. He's got Musketeer guards. We're just gonna ignore the guards on both sides and we're trying to ramp up some aggression here with a flying machine behind our Lava Hound. So we'll see what we can accomplish here. Hopefully he doesn't have Fireball. I think that we wanna go in for our clones so then we're able to get double Lava Hound pups on him. And then maybe we go in for a Lumberjack because it's going to be able to kill the Giant Skeleton and still go right into his Musketeer to kill it a little bit quicker so then the Flying Machine's able to lock on. And we Rage everything up. It's going to be much better than dropping a Skarmy because then we get Raged up Flying Machines on the tower. And that's going to be a ton of damage for us. So he's got Poison, unfortunately, with Musketeer. So he should hard counter us. Maybe we're still going to be able to win this game, though. I really want to play aggressive when his Poison is going to be out of cycle, and uh, if he wants to drop it and cycle back to it, it's gonna cost him a lot of elixir, so. We'll just go in for a Lava Hound and a Baby Dragon here. He's got Fisherman, so he's probably got Graveyard with this deck if I'm anticipating it correctly. I'm gonna go for Bats just to kill the Fisherman a little bit quicker and apply some more aggression. Heck, I could even go in for a clone again just to bait out a poison. I know he's gonna poison this, he has to now. But if he poisoned it, then we would be able to kill the Giant Skeleton still and do a lot of damage to the Musketeer. So he might have been able to defend the tower, but it's still really risky. He tried to spend all of his elixir on defense, and he still came up short, guys. So he took the tower and thwarted his entire elixir push. So he has no remnants of elixir coming at us to support a graveyard, which feels really good for me. 
Heck, I can go for a fly machine in the middle, and no matter where he goes, this fly machine will be able to hit it. Heck, he's gonna go in for that, and I think he's gonna poison this, Skarmy. I'll go in for a snowball if he does. So we're able to finish up skeletons that accumulate. I don't really think I want to anymore. That's not very many skeletons. It's not worth my elixir. We can go in for a lava hand on the left hand side and we can start ramping up aggression. One of my favorite pushes to do is to go in for a lumberjack plus lava hound. And if they don't go for a poison on it, it's really bad for them. So we'll see if he does it or not. He's going to go in for a ton of aggression on the other side. I'm just going to let him take the tower. There's nothing I can really do about it. I want to go in for a Skarmy right on top of the Musketeer though, so then he's not able to get a huge push on uh, on us afterward. As long as the Giant Skeleton dies away from my tower, we're going to be fine. And he's going to go in for a Graveyard again, so he's going to play really aggressive. I'm not a huge fan of what he's doing here. We should be able to defend this, and he won't be able to 3 crown me. And then the Lava Hound on the left-hand side is completely undefended, so there's no point in me spending even more Elixir there. Just concentrating on my defense is all I needed to do, because I knew that the Lava Hound was going to take the tower. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. It was a pleasure playing against you. We did not get three crowned. In fact, we asserted dominance all over this legend, and that felt really good, man. Here we go, guys. We're gonna sauce out a good luck, and we're gonna see what's up. Let's go in for bats in the back just to cycle and see what this guy's got in store for us. I don't want to go for my Skarmie. We're gonna be saving that. Oh, he's got bats of his own. All right, dude, we have Lava Hound in cycle. You always want to drop that as your first play if you have Skarmie in your hand, and that's what we're gonna do. Since he's gonna go for a Royal Ghost, we're gonna wait a little bit and see if he drops anything else. So he's gonna go for a Miner. I'm gonna go in for a Lumberjack and get a plus two interaction here. And this Lumberjack is gonna demand some type of presence here. Heck, we could go in for a Flying Machine with our Lava Hound. And I don't think he's gonna have a phenomenal answer to that. He went in for a Poison already, man. And if you do that early on, I could go for a Lava Hound clone on you. And this isn't gonna pop until the Poison's gone. And then, oh, look at all that juicy damage, boys. We get a snowball out of him, we get bats out of him, and we get a ton of extra damage. So we see a pretty aggressive minor rail ghost push at the start of the game. And we saw snowball, musketeer, and bats on defense. So I think we're going to be okay if I just go in for another really aggressive play with the baby dragon and lava hound. And he's not going to have great answers because his bats are going to be out of cycle. He might go in for like a royal ghost minor push. I'm not exactly sure what you would do in uh, his situation. It doesn't seem like it's very good because he doesn't have bats. He has no way of killing this baby dragon. The baby dragon will belch all over that musketeer. And then he's going to go for bats. But the musky's still going to die. I'm not going to support this any longer because it would be going into two bats. And I really don't want my fly machine to be targeting bats for a while for no reason whatsoever. We want to conserve our elixir when we have an advantage. And we want to pressure our advantage as soon as we get back to our lava hound. So let's go for a fly machine now. We know that he's not going to have great answers to that. He's going to go for Royal Recruits in the back. He's got Royal Recruits. He's got Fishermen. So those cards are not so great against us. So that's uh, definitely something that we're pretty happy about. Oh my gosh, he knocked it back. I was hoping he would knock it further away from the river. That would be even better for me, to be honest. We could go in for Skarmy just to pull the Royal Recruits here and just use the uh, Baby Dragon as our best answer to the Musketeer. We're going to be able to rage everything up. And the Baby Dragon is able to pelch on top of everything. So this is really cool. Baby Dragon will be able to kill the bats. The bats are non-cycle, so it's going to take him a couple cards, three more cards to get back to them. And if I'm able to defend this, let's say with a fly machine in the middle that's still going to be going on the right-hand side after, then I could walk with a fat W. So let's go in for a Skarmy right now, try to finish everything off. What was that snowball? We're at 11 wins in a grand challenge, and he just chief patted a snowball like it's his job, man. We're going to go in for a juicy... Oh, he predicted that, so he did come back with a really nice play after. But he did chief pat a snowball, guys, so... He's not excused for that play. Made one really good prediction, but it wasn't enough. And then he just wasted five elixir on defense. Dude, I think that Lava Clone just forces out really big mistakes from opponents. Whenever they're at like high wins and grand challenges, they're like, oh, I have to win the game. High pressure situation. And then they're playing against Lava Clone. And then when they make one misplay, so much damage for us. I want to go in for a baby dragon here. He's going to go for a poison. So let's go for a Skarmie on defense and then go for another Lava Hound, maybe at the river, so that we can protect the Baby Dragon. If that's possible, that'd be great. I'm just going to keep up the aggression here and go in for a Fly Mission and then clone and we walk with the W. I feel a little bit dirty playing this deck. I'm not going to lie, guys. I feel a little bit disgusting. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. It was a pleasure playing against you, and we asserted dominance all over the Donald. This deck is absolutely insane. Whenever your opponent makes one mistake, you automatically punish them and capture the W. Let's move on to the next game, and let's keep asserting dominance. 
So we're gonna start off this game with a giant snowball. I have Lava Hound in my card cycle, but I don't have Bats and I don't have Skarmie. So that's why I went in for that first. I went in for the snowball to cycle to my Bats and my Skarmie so that I'm able to defend no matter what my opponent drops at me. If he drops a Balloon, well, we have the Bats. And if you wanna zap that, then you can't defend against the Lava Hound clone on the right-hand side. If you go in for a lot of spam on the left, and we defend with Skarmie, and then you overextend and zap it as well, then we're gonna be doing a tower trade. And I'm pretty comfortable with that since we're rocking Lava Clone. So fortunately for us, our Baby Dragon's gonna lock right on top of that Muskie, and he's running 2.6. So let's go in for a clone right on top, make sure we rage up everything, double the domination. Look at the Venn diagram that we're drawing out here. Unfortunately, he's gonna have Musketeer and Fireball to shut us down. So we need to be able to bounce back with a Vengeance and knock out this Musketeer. I want to go in for a giant snowball. I want to save my bats on defense against the hog rider because if he doesn't go in for an ice golem on top of the bats, then there's no way for him to kill it. So we'll see what he does. Is he going to go for a pre-log? No, he's going to go for the ice golem. So let's go in for the skarmy so then we're able to kill the hog rider here. It's not going to be able to pop and kill all of these skeletons, so we're fine. As long as he doesn't go in for a log plus ice golem and then hog rider, he's not going to be able to take out our tower. Very important to do that skarmy placement where you're fully surrounding the hog rider so then you're not just sacrificing everything to the greater cause of the ice golem. So if you uh, protect your skeletons, you will get handsomely rewarded for your placements. I'm gonna go in for a baby dragon because skeletons can't be distracting us for much longer, opposed to dropping a fly machine first where the skeletons are able to just soak up individual hits and it's much worse for me. We're gonna go in for a fireball and unfortunately we don't really get much out of that. We get the tower, but to be honest, he uh, fireballs everything. so. I don't even know if it was the best play going for the clone there. I was thinking, hey, if we bit out the fireball, you know what happens, guys? We still have the flying mission. He doesn't have an answer to it. But in reality, we really didn't need to. We were going to take the tower regardless, and he was probably going to have to fireball regardless. So if you're going to do that and you waste three elixir with a clone, not the best decision. But it's also not the best decision to try to defend a tower that's going to be forfeit. So with Lava Clone, your defensive capabilities are quite limited and he's probably in a pre-log. Yep, so I wasn't going to spend extra elixir on the right-hand side. It just did not make sense to me. So now he's going to go for a Fireball. That means he doesn't have a great answer to the clone. So we can go in for the Skarmy right on top of the Musketeer, go in for a Lumberjack in the middle, and go in for Bats. So if I had expended elixir with the Skarmy on the right, not only would it have died completely in a pre-log and given me no value, I would have also not had the elixir to just cannibalize his left hand side and apply the amount of aggression that I did. So I probably would have lost this game if I hadn't played that way. GG, well played, and peace out Girl Scout, pleasure playing against you. And we even three crowned him for our troubles. That was awesome, man. We're gonna sauce out a giant snowball here and this guy is gonna go in for a goblin gang. So we should shut that down with just bats and we'll see if he's running log bait or not. I expect this to be log bait or a mortar bait deck. It's gonna be one or the other. So let's go in for our lava hound here. We have a lot of defensive combinations with either a fly machine, lumberjack, and then we also have Skarmie if we cycle one card. So no matter what he throws at us, we're still going to be fine, especially when he's already cycled Goblin Gang, and uh, he's not going to have that to support his aggression. So he's probably going to go for a Miner here, so we're going to go for a very high Baby Dragon, and the Miner was exactly where we expected it to be, so we evaded it masterfully, and then we should be able to go in for a Fly Machine. The Baby Dragon is going to get on top of the Princess as well, and then we could go in for a Lumberjack on the left-hand side. Guys, we might just be able to walk away the W because I completely predicted his placement. So whenever you see Minion Horde at the river like that, you should expect them to go in for a Miner. So whenever you're dropping any type of counter to it, you make sure that you either Fireball it if you can't drop something that's gonna kill it. Like if I had Magic Archer and I had to drop Magic Archer, I really wouldn't be able to defend it adequately. Or if I had Princess, I would drop it like really high. If I had Princess Ice Spirit, that'd be fine. But if I had Musketeer, I, I couldn't do it. So I'd have to Fireball. I'd just be like, you know what? I'm gonna wait, I'm not gonna drop my Musketeer and then I'm gonna Fireball. Or you go in for Musketeer and Ice Golem and you drop a very high Musketeer so it doesn't get minor. You have to do something along those lines. You have to be pretty creative. Because if you just go head first right into someone that's got Minion Horde, you're going to lose the game. So again, we're going to go in for a very high Baby Dragon. We're going to go and Snowball that back so then we make sure we kill all those minions. And we should be able to walk away with a W despite him having Ice Wizard, probably with Tornado, with Princess, and Minion Horde. So I, I think we're going to be able to win this if we just defend. I need to save my baby dragon in cycle. That's my biggest concern is if my baby dragon gets completely thrashed by a miner, we should lose. So I'm going to try to keep that in card cycle. I'm going to save my lumberjack for the miner, I think. And we're going to cycle bats because I can just... I can afford to play defensive right now. I don't have to do much. Go for the lumberjack, same lane as where the miner will be. And then we'll go in for a snowball just to knock that away. If I keep snowballing 
uh, cycle as well that I can just propel back his minions and give me a little bit more time. Then we can counter push. If you have Lava Hound and you have units coming down the middle, it's generally a pretty good play to go for Lava Hound and support it. Just takes time away from your opponent. They have to spend Elixir defending when they have to play aggressive if they want to win. He has to apply a lot of aggression if he wants to win this game. So we can go in for a Baby Dragon here, snowball everything back. And the Baby Dragon should be able to walk with a W. He's going to go for a Fireball. So he actually has a really good matchup in this. Because he's got Fireball for the Flying Machine. He's got Minion Horde, Ice Wizard. He's got a lot of great defensive cards. So it would have been hard for me to break through if I hadn't played so well in the first initial trade. We walked away with a W against Kid Gamer Brazil. And I'm very glad to take it. GG, well played and peace out, brother.